Everything good. Um, some people call me a, a health nut. Um, I had an old friend from 50 years ago who still remembers me trying different diets to fix allergies and stuff like that. So I thought my sermon today would be on winter self-care. And I don't claim to own it. It's something that uh, Touchstones was published in Touchstones. And it was so good that I thought, why don't I just read this? It's called uh, Wintering, a Theology of Care from Touchstones. Winter, especially as you go further north, can be brutal. Of course, most uh, of, of course, most can winter in homes that protect them against cold and snow, but not all. For homeless people or those living in substandard housing, winter can be brutally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. In addition, their resources for wintering are limited. Beyond this, many people struggle with winter. Whether related to the winter outside or the weather within, wintering is the process by which we attend to both. To understand how challenging winter could be just over a hundred years ago, we have Laura Engel Wilder's Little House Books, which were auto, auto, autobiographical. Her book, The Long Winter, was set during the winter of 1880-1881 in the southeastern Dakota Territory when Ingalls was 14 years old. Because of ongoing severe blizzards of the Great Plains, they called it the Snow Winter. Beginning with a blizzard in October 1880 and continuing until March 1881, snow accumulation reached 11 feet. It cut people off from trade and supplies and available food stores went dangerously low. The following year is recount recounted in the happy golden years Laura, now 15 years old, became a teacher with a two-month teaching assignment from December to January at the Brewster Settlement, which was 12 miles from her home. She boarded with Mr. Brewster, the superintendent, and his wife, and taught students in a roughly constructed claim shanty. A claim shanty was, was something you had to build to temporarily claim your site while you went to take care of it officially. I had to look that one up. Um, while there, Laura witnessed Mrs. Brewster, unstable and homesick, threatening her husband with a knife and screaming that he'd take her back east. Life on the prairie could be brutal, especially in winter, because of weather conditions alternating between howling wind and oppressive silence, harsh living conditions, in claim shanties and extreme isolation. Consequently, many women and some men experienced prairie madness, which could manifest as depression, withdrawal, personality changes, and occasionally violence. While prairie madness is no longer an issue, winter can be a struggle. Some people experience cabin fever if trapped indoors for an extended period of time due to winter weather. Well, this is not a diagnostic term. Cabin fever is real, manifesting unhappiness, restlessness, and general discomfort. Cabin fever was exacerbated during the height of the COVID pandemic, and often its consequences were severe. The other winter malady is called winter blues. The awareness that our moods can vary with the seasons is not new. However, in 1984, Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD, SAD, was identified as a subset of depression associated with winter. In the US, about four to six percent of adults experience SAD, while the number in Canada is only two to three percent. 
about 15% of adults in both countries deal with a milder form of SAD. While the incidence of SAD increases further north, the lower numbers in Canada are confusing. Uh, some suggest that Canada's quality of life is better than the US and results in lower stress, well, uh, which decreases the prevalence of SAD. The physical, emotional, and spiritual challenges of winter call for skills, activities, and practices to use in the wintering process. These are aspects of a theology of care, uh, both self-care and caring for others. Unfortunately, as was evident to Laura Ingalls, Mrs. Brewster was incapable of self-care or caring for others as ev evidenced by her neglect of her son. A theology of care in the context of wintering is grounded in our first three principles. One, the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Two, compassion in human relations. Three, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth. Several UU sources also inform this theology. One, a renewal of the spirit and an openness to the forces that create and uphold life. Two, the transforming power of love. Five, the guidance of reason and the results of science. And six, to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. A theology of care to do with, uh, I'm sorry, a theology of care has to do with praxis, which focuses on doing, on living our principles and values into action. It draws on belief and wisdom, but it is grounded in action. A theology of care is a practical theology as it seeks, notes Unitarian Universalist theologian Thandeka, to be a faith in action way of loving beyond belief. A theology of care includes pastoral care, but it is not limited to the role of the minister because our congregational commitment is to shared ministry. Our role in this kind of care is to be a companion, which means to break with, to, uh, which means to break bread with. In this context, bread is a metaphor for paying attention, compassionate presence, deep listening, nurturing, empathy, kindness, respect, holding in heart and mind, hospitality, and emotional, social, and spiritual support. Being a caring companion involves the work of love, of being a spiritual friend. Being a caring companion involves the work of love. It is, it is not about having answers or trying to fix someone. It is being with someone or being there for someone. In her book, Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times, which is a memoir, as well as a trove of wisdom on wintering, Catherine May writes, everybody winters at one time or another. Some winter over and over again, she continues. Wintering is a season in the cold. It is a fallow period in life where you're, when you're cut off from the world, feeling rejected, sidelined, blocked from progress, or cast into the role of an outsider. Perhaps it results from an illness or a life event such as bereavement or the birth of a child. Perhaps it comes from a humiliation or failure. Perhaps you're in a period of transition and have temporarily fallen between two worlds. Some creep upon us more slowly. Some are appallingly sudden. In emphasizing care, she writes that wintering is a time for reflection and recuperation, for slow replenishment, for putting your house in order, doing those deeply unfashionable things, slowing down, letting your spare time expand, getting enough sleep, resting, 
is a radical act, but it is essential. While the incidence of SAD is re relatively low, many, suggests, many suggestions for dealing with it are also good self-care practices for wintering. Consider the following. One, begin focusing on self-care in the autumn. We have the metaphor of the harvest, gathering good things for oneself. Recall Aesop's, fa Aesop's fable of the ant and the grasshopper. The ants prepare for winter while the grasshopper makes music. Self-care can include connecting with friends and doing enjoyable activities. Make social activities a priority. That's number two. Uh, Dr. Kim Burgess, a psychologist, writes, finding creative ways to stay connected with others during times of increased isolation is important. Number three, make sleep a spiritual discipline. I have no problem with that one. Practice good sleep, which means going to sleep on time, getting enough sleep, and getting up on a set schedule. Oversleeping can occur due to higher melatonin levels in the winter, but too much sleep does not enhance one's mood. Number four, befriend the light. In winter, natural light is a good mood enhancer. Open the blinds or curtains, work in spaces with natural light, and use, the and use full spectrum light bulbs, which can replicate natural light. Consider using bright light therapy and dawn simulators if sad is an issue. Get outdoors on sunny days at noon when the natural sunlight peaks. Go outside. When weather permits, go outside on walks or run errands, especially when the sunlight is brightest. Number six, make moving a spiritual discipline. While an ex exercise routine is always essential, make it, a, uh, it is vital in winter. At a minimum, simply walking outside can be beneficial. Number seven, help others. Not only is it wise to get outside, but in winter it is essential to get outside ourselves. Consider making time for community service, social justice active activities, or volunteering. Number eight, address stress. While we may not be able to stress less, we can mitigate the effects of stress. Many of the practices listed above can reduce the impact of stress. Also consider eating dark chocolate, another favorite, drinking green tea, listening to music, and eating well. Cookies can be a burden, but it also can be an activity that gives pleasure. Consider cooking some comfort food from your childhood as a treat. Finally, laugh more. As Jessamine West said, a good time to laugh is when you can. Number nine, meditate. Consider meditating for 10 minutes by sitting comfortably, closing your eyes breathing out for five seconds and breathing in for five seconds, over and over. Once this is established practice, uh, once this is an established practice, you can add other techniques. Number 10, keep a journal. Each night reflect on and write down what was notable about the day. Reflect on your thoughts and feelings. Capture any concerns that you might have Consider setting one intention for the next day. Something that you um, did today that you want to do differently. Something that you want to pay attention to. Something that you want to try, etc. Your journaling should take note the wisdom of Jesus in the proto-gnostic gospel of Thomas. If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Self-care and caring for others are fundamental to a theology of care. May the depth and breadth of our care and wintering be such 
that with the Reverend Greta Crosby, we can, I quote, praise winter, rich in beauty, challenge and pregnant negativities. Are some of these suggestions for wintering what you employ? Uh, or do you have your own methods? Does anyone wish to share what works for them? Please come up to the microphone or show on chat that you wish to speak. Does anyone want to add anything to, to this? I will add one, do yoga or start yoga <laughs> anywhere. All yoga is good for you. And now is a great time to start. End of sermon. <laughs>